when I got into the accident The sight that flashed before me was your face But when I walked up to the podium I think that I forgot to say your name I'm on a bench in Coney Island Wondering where did my baby go And I, when I got into the accident The sight that flashed before me was your face but when I walked up to the podium, I think that I forgot to say your name. So at my most vulnerable, when I thought I was going to die, the last image I thought of was you. And then when I got up to the podium, I couldn't say your name? That is a damning thing. It's not unforgivable. I mean, who cares what people say at a podium? But what you're saying is by not saying your name at the podium, I don't hold you in my kind of contemporary world. You're not, a, you're not a person I kind of think of in a day-to-day -day way. I appreciate the candor in these lyrics. It's about saying sorry to people for destroying their lives through their success. Maybe other people might gloat about. This doesn't seem like gloating. This seems more like, I mean, it's regret. There's regret here. like sun lays me down my mind she runs throughout the night no need to fight never a frown with golden brown little golden brown for me right here hi everybody welcome back to my channel Andy here that was a song called golden brown by the stranglers from a while ago and it's a song that I love very much and it has no chorus <laughs> And yet it is still, it was still a huge hit. And uh, I often like songs like that. They don't have a chorus. They're, j they're just so kind of groovy and, and uh, they sound so amazing that everybody just loves them anyway. That is a song like many of the songs I like, which is about someone's love of heroin. But today we are not talking about heroin. We are talking about Coney Island, apparently. Coney Island is a place I've been to multiple times. I'm from uh, Connecticut. We get to go to New York and Massachusetts. Uh, everybody hates us but we get to go to both places, which is great. Uh, whenever I think of Coney Island, I think of the giant wooden roller coaster known as the Cyclone. Wood, wood and I don't understand how wood, it was built in 20, 1927, so I don't know how wood, I'm sure they've refurbished it with new wood over the years. Let's not get too locked down in the old <laughs> Coney Island Cyclone discussion. It's like one of the few reasons that people from Manhattan will go to Brooklyn is to head down to Coney Island. <laughs> They'll skip all of Brooklyn and go to Coney Island. There is something very memoryful about Coney Island. I think because it's a fairground, it's a place a lot of people go, especially on the East Coast when you're little, it's kind of a place that everybody, it's a touchstone for everybody. It's a place we can all remember. Before we start, I just want to say, please consider liking and subscribing. When we hit 10,000 subscribers on this channel, I will shave my face in the way that you, my subscribers, choose. I'll put up a poll, we'll give a bunch of different options, Fu Manchu, mutton chops, et cetera, et cetera, and you will be able to decide how my face is shaved, if you're a subscriber. Okay, so we got a... Featuring the National, ooh. soul in two looking for you but you're right here if I can't relate to you any more than who am I related to and if this is a long haul how'd we get here so soon did I close my fist around something Delicate did I shatter you And I'm sitting on a bench in Coney Island Wondering where did my baby go The fast times, the bright lights, the merry-go Sorry for not making you my centerfold Over and over Lost again with no surprises Disappointments close your eyes And it gets colder and colder When the sun goes down OK, 
Okay. It's a pensive song. It's a thoughtful song. It's like a stream of consciousness song. We're creating an atmosphere. It's almost like it sounds like it'd be in a soundtrack to something or, or like it would be the uh, backdrop to something. I bet she's doing this with a capo. I'm stupid. <laughs> she's doing this with a capo. She's probably doing... Not your standard kind of pop chord structure. You can hear this is a meandering song. This is not a song that really rests into any kind of big poppy uh, chord shifts or, or chord structure. Break my soul in two looking for you, but you're right here. If I can't relate to you anymore, then who am I related to? Part of this really seems like she's speaking about a current relationship that's kind of in flux or or kind of ending, but there's really the sense of remembering past relationships. We're in a relationship now where everything is cold and distant, and we're still together because of convenience, because it's easier to stay together than it is to break up. It reminds me of the famous line from the movie Heat. I got a wife. We're passing each other on the downslope of a marriage, my third. You're somebody who I felt so fundamentally related to me. I, I you know, I. I it's an interesting way to say related to, because she's not talking about somebody she's literally related to, but that's kind of what it feels like. This person has become family, but also just kind of the atmosphere of a place, being somewhere that somebody used to be or that you associate with somebody. And if this long haul, how'd we get here so soon? Did I close my fist around something delicate? Did I shatter you? Recrimination, redoing arguments in your head, uh, figuring out, you know, we, we've all done it. How many times have you argued with somebody in your head? And, or, or remember, you know, remembered a breakup or remembered something you'd done together and wished it could go a different way. And I'm sitting on a bench in Coney Island. One, this is all, again, very poetic. Again, all, not like a, like a slam poetry kind of feel, but almost, almost like declarative sentences read lyrically over uh, music. But it's, it's, it's a song, but it is almost like just a, a, a poetry reading. And I'm sitting on a bench in Coney Island wondering, where did my baby go? The, fa the fast times, the bright lights, the merry-go, right? The merry-go-round. We think of a merry-go-round at a, at a fairground. There used to be these incredible bright lights and enjoyment of our relationship, and now it's, it's gone. Sorry for not making you my centerfold. Again, very interesting imagery coming from a woman. I I'm, I'm sure there are male centerfolds in the world. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Don't send me pictures, I will take your word for it. But in general, I think when we think of a centerfold, we think of women. It almost kind of sounds like sarcastic, sorry not for ma not making you my centerfold. It'd be very, very different if the gender roles were res reversed, probably if a man were saying, sorry I didn't make you my centerfold, it might be taken in a condescending way. She's, she's having all these emotions about this person, but she's also still kind of dismissing them. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't make you my centerfold. I think that's very human. I think that's very real. I like these lyrics. I like the feel of this song. Initially when it came in, it seemed a little plodding and pedantic, but when they, when they really just kind of allow the uh, completeness and the fullness of the way they're gonna do the lyrics come out, I think it wins it over. The question pounds my head. What's a lifetime of achievement? I pushed you to the edge, but you were too polite to leave me. Do you miss the rogue who coaxed you into paradise and left you there? Will you forgive my soul when you're too wise to trust me and too old to care? Cause we were like them all before the internet. It was the one place to be The mischief, the gift wrapped suburban dreams Sorry for not winning you an arcade ring Over and over Lost again with no surprises Disappointments, close your eyes And it gets colder and colder When the sun goes down
like that uh, vocal coming in. So this is probably Matt, the lead singer from The National. He's so deep. Let's listen to how deep he is. When the sun goes down. When the sun goes down. I can't get down there. Hold on. I'm trying it again. When the sun, the sun goes down. All right. Matt Beringer from The National can sing lower than I can. You can hear the finger scratches on the acoustic that they're playing. There's a couple acoustic guitars on this, I believe, and they're playing it here, and then they have this uh, repetitious um, C to A sharp there. They seem to be kind of leaning into it, and we hear those little kind of finger scratches on the steel strings. I really like the atmospherics of that. I almost feel like I'm in Coney Island, like I'm in one of the gross bathrooms there, and I can hear this song kind of playing off the walls, the kind of stone wall that's everywhere. Lost again with no surprises, disappointments, close your eyes, and I almost wanted them to say eyes. And it gets colder and colder when the sun goes down. Lost again with no surprises. I'm still thinking about what no surprises means. The question pounds my head, what's a lifetime of achievement if I pushed you to the edge but you were too polite to leave me? A lifetime of achievement, which is, you know, undoubtedly a good thing, um, does not seem to me to be something that lends itself to like living or to like kind of being in the moment. You know, you wouldn't leave the person almost out of like, out of, out of being polite, but also out of maybe even just like laziness or just not wanting to like do the whole thing where you break up. It's a really kind of sad, lonely kind of feeling to feel like that in a relationship. Like you're just kind of going through the motions out of, you know, bland necessity. Do you miss the rogue who coaxed you into paradise? I brought you into the world of luxury and fame and celebrity and all that stuff. And then I kind of left you and now you're there kind of in a certain sense, but not really. Will you forgive my soul when you're too wise to trust me and too old to care? It's almost as if saying like, well, you don't trust me, but you love me anyway. Too wise to think that I'm reliable in a certain way, but you're too old to care either way and you, and you want to be with me anyway. We were like the mall before the internet. It was the one place to be. The mischief, the gift wrap, suburban dreams. Sorry for not winning you an arcade ring. Okay, so Coney Island, I can see that. Like Coney Island kind of being the mall before the mall, the kind of the fairground where everyone used to kind of congregate. And then the mall, I remember when I was a kid, people would go to the mall. I mean, you'd go to the mall if you had to buy something, but I remember going to the mall. Like you'd go to the mall and just like be there. It was just, it was just astonishingly boring. But yeah, you were just surrounded by kind of retail and everybody was supposed to be there and be seen. And it was, it's such an interesting kind of, notion that the mall was the internet before the internet. There's something very kind of uh, disillusioned about this. There's a politics to this song. There's a, um, a, a disappointment in not only the way this relationship worked out, but the way this world worked out in a certain way. Were you waiting at a old spot in the tree line by the gold clock? Did I leave you hanging every single day? Standing in the hallway with a big cake Happy birthday, did I paint your bluest skies The darkest gray, the universe way And when I got into the accident The sight that flashed before me was your face But when I walked up to the podium I think that I forgot to say your name I'm on a bench in Coney Island Wondering where did my baby go The fast times, the bright lights, the merry go Sorry for not making you my centerfold Over and over Lost again with no surprises, disappointments Close your eyes and it gets colder and colder
Were you waiting at our old spot in the tree line by the gold clock? Did I leave you hanging every single day? Seems like a very specific place to meet, you know, when you're kids. And did I leave you hanging every single day? Were you standing in the hallway with the big quake? So this is almost maybe them reliving things that happened at that time. Times they'd let people down or times that their schedule, I couldn't afford being around them. Were you standing in the hallway with a big cake, happy birthday? Did I paint your bluest skies with the darkest gray a universe away? You're going through kind of the motions of our old life and I'm out there speaking and being famous. Does it torture you? This is not the most like, uh, you know, I'll say this and I, I understand it might bother some people. This is not the most kind of flattering perspective to be seen from. And I, when I got into the accident, the sight that flashed before me was your face. But when I walked up to the podium, I think that I forgot to say your name. When I got into the accident, I'm thinking of a car accident. People who've watched my channel before know that I have been in a horrible car accident. Like, what a crazy line. And when I got into the accident, the sight that flashed before me was your face. So at my most vulnerable, when I thought I was going to die, the last image I thought of was you. And then when I got up to the podium, I couldn't say your name. That is a damning thing. That does... It's not unforgivable. I mean, who cares what people say at a podium? But what you're saying is by not saying your name at the podium, I don't hold you in my kind of contemporary world. You're not a, you're not a person I kind of think of in a day-to-day -day way or that I kind of wear as a, as a badge of, of friendship of somebody that, we, that has been through something with me. Maybe it's because it's such a personal thing to me. I appreciate the candor in these lyrics. It's about saying sorry to people for destroying their lives through their success. Maybe other people might gloat about. This doesn't seem like gloating. This seems more like, I mean, it's regret. There's regret here. I'm, I'm on a bench in Coney Island wondering, where did my baby go? Sorry for not making you my centerfold. And then the second time I hear that, I think she means centerfold as a compliment. Centerfold being my main kind of person to look at and be with. This is a song that kind of reveals a certain self-centeredness of celebrity. I know it comes from a place of, of, of soul searching, and this is a song that seems to really want to be very open and blunt and honest. I am not good at caring about being around celebrities. It has hurt me in my past. Uh, I was at a script reading of um, Oh God, I can't even say the show name. I was at a, uh, I was on the Fox lot just watching a friend of mine, and we were there, and we were listening to a, to a, uh, to a reading of a show that was going to be taped, a table reading of a, of a show that was going to be taped. And um, at the end, it was really fun and really cool, and, and we, they gave us all scripts. At the end, we went up to one of the actors, and he was signing everybody's scripts. He was being really, really nice, really, really funny and everything. And I forgot to ask him for an autograph on my script because I'd put it in my pocket and I'd just forgotten. And, and I just didn't think to ask him for an autograph. And somebody was like, well, I didn't, later on, they're like, well, that was, why'd you not ask him for a autograph? And I was like, oh, I don't know, I didn't. And I realized, oh, it must've been so insulting. It must've been, because everybody else wanted his autograph. It must've been as if I was saying like, no, I don't want your autograph. If at the time I had thought of it, it was like, yes, please give me your autograph. Uh, it, just be polite. So maybe I'm just like bad at, at kind of assuming the identity or the, the kind of the power of celebrity. I know the power of celebrity. I know I, we've all seen the power of celebrity, but like such a fascinating perspective to sing this song from. I mean, this album thematically, we were talking last week about themes and a lot of people had some really interesting answers. And I think one of the themes really is coming into our own growing up a little bit, kind of becoming more clear eyed about the industry and the world that she's in. And as she goes into these much less poppy songs and much more kind of um, nuanced kind of indie kind of melodic structures and tries out these new type of, I applaud it entirely. So really fascinating song. There seems to be some disagreement on the Reddit about kind of themes in there, uh, sarcasm in there. I think that for me, this song does a really good job of showing the duality of a breakup occurring when you're saying things, you know, I'm sorry that I didn't win you the arcade ring. And you are sorry, but you're also sorry that it's just an arcade ring. You know, it's, there is duality and self-servingness uh, 
to compassion sometimes when you're breaking up or when you're going through something really intense with a partner. When you're showing them compassion, sometimes it can also be you reveal some of that self-serving or sarcasm in your own voice. I think this song actually does a really good job of that. I understand it's not everybody's favorite, but I recommend maybe giving it another listen if you enjoy her lyrics uh, and the Nationals' lyrics. Um, so I thought this was a really kind of, this was a pretty brave song, I thought. Um, melodically not my favorite, but definitely a brave, interesting, good song. And with that, that is the end of this week. Please consider liking and subscribing if you want to have a say in how I shave my face when we hit 10,000 subscribers. And um, until next time, keep playing.